Welcome once again to Sunday School, Sunday School a Bible Study here at Grace Baptist Church. This, this particular message I'm going to give you a preview, preview on to prepare you, make you ready beforehand. We are going to be dealing with figurative and literal language today found in the Holy Scriptures. The literal will enable us to apply the figurative to our lives as Christians. I need your undivided attention. We're going to see the word reckon, which means to consider, to regard, account it to be, add it up. Symbolically, you are dead to sin. We will be looking at two primary truths. Add these two things up, and we are symbolically dead to sin. Newness of life. Newness of life. This is the main thing, this newness of life due to the new birth, being born again, is going to enable us to carry out what is said in Romans chapter 6. We'll actually begin this morning in Romans chapter 5. But before I do that, I want to repeat some things seen in Romans chapter 3 and Romans chapter 7. By law is knowledge of sin. I would not have known sin except through law. For I would not have known, and that means been conscious of, for I would not have been conscious of covetousness unless the law had said, you shall not covet. Now reading in Romans 5.20. Moreover, law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin, the offense, and sin, sin is an offense against God, it offends God. But where sin abounded, grace abounded much more. 1 Timothy 1.14 speaks of grace as exceedingly abundant. Thanks be to God. So that as sin reigned in death, ruled in death, even so grace might reign, might rule through righteousness. Not only the righteousness of Christ, but our righteousness, which we'll be looking at in this sixth chapter. Even so, grace might reign, might rule through righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? I believe your King James next say, God forbid, literally those words are, never may it be. How shall we, Christians, who died to sin, and here is where we are introduced to some Figurative language, figuratively speaking, 
Symbolical, not literal. How shall we who died to sin live in, any longer in it? Living in sin, a lifestyle of sin. How shall we who died to sin continue that lifestyle? Or do you not know? So Christians, we've got to know this. Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Folks, this cannot be talking about water baptism, being baptized into Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13, Paul the Apostle, as led by the Holy Spirit of God, said this. Now listen, listen. For by one Spirit, the Holy Spirit, we were all, all Christians, baptized into one body, the body of Christ, the church. Whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all, A-L-L, not one less, and have all been made to drink into one Spirit, the Holy Spirit. John the Baptist, in Matthew chapter 3, proclaimed... I indeed baptize you with water unto or with a view to repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with Holy Spirit and fire. Baptism of the Spirit, folks. We have been raised from the death of trespasses and sins and made alive together with Christ eternally. This is an absolute spiritual reality. It's not figurative. This new birth identifies us with the death of Christ. The new birth identifies us with the death of Christ. Therefore, back in Romans chapter 6, therefore we were buried with him through bapti baptism, baptism of the Spirit, into death. That is figurative language. But then we go to literal language. That just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. These things are real. Christ was raised from the dead, and in the new birth we have a newness of life, and we must Walk in it. We must conduct ourselves in newness of life. Conduct ourselves as led by the Holy Spirit of God who indwells us. As we've been talking of this leading to life, a death leading to life, Christ's death leading to his resurrection and to our resurrection in the new birth, leading to a newness of life manifested in our daily conduct. Therefore, 
If anyone is in Christ, a new creation. Behold, the old things have passed away. New has come into being. Now the rest of this chapter, chapter 6, goes on according to how and why we should conduct ourselves. And that means our lives in the newness of life. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, figuratively speaking, Certainly we also shall be of resurrection. I'm removing the inserted words. They're not there. So I'm not going to read them. We don't need to read them at this particular case. Certainly we also shall be of resurrection. Not only the resurrection of our bodies at the last day, but this newness of life, this new birth, which is a resurrection from the death of trespasses and sins. And this resurrection we speak of here, this is not figurative, but speaks of new life in Christ which makes it possible, this new life in Christ makes it possible for us to practice what Paul continues to speak of figuratively. Remember I said I need your complete attention. Listen, please listen. This is so very, very important. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, and that we should no longer be slaves of sin. He uses figurative language again, because in the very next chapter he speaks about this body of death that is upon him. For he who has died has been freed from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Remember I told you that the literal language would follow the figurative, making it able, enabling us to apply the figurative to our lives today. You see, if we live with him, which is an absolute truth we do, he is our life, that enables us to consider ourselves as being dead with Christ. Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Absolute, literal truth. Death no longer has dominion over him. Absolutely true. For that he died, he died to sin once for all. At one time, boom, a done deal. But that he lives, he lives to God. We are in him. He is our life. We live to God as well. Now listen up, because I'm going to prove beyond any shadow of doubt when I speak of figurative language. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin. The word reckon, as I introduced you to when we began, means To consider, regard, account it to be so, add it up. This proves, that word proves, 
that this language is figurative, not literal. But look what the figurative language is followed by. Reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. You see, that's literally true. We are in Christ, in the person of the Holy Spirit of Christ, enabling us to reckon ourselves dead to sin. To to count ourselves dead to sin. To consider, to regard ourselves dead to sin. We can apply that figurative language to our lives today. And we've got another proof coming. Therefore... Do not let sin reign or rule in your mortal body that you should obey it in its lusts. And do not present your members instruments of unrighteousness to sin. But present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead and your members instruments of righteousness to God. Now listen. For sin shall not have dominion over you. For you are not under law, but under grace. Friends, this is an absolute, literal truth. It is a reality. And this is the other point I was speaking of that will enable us to apply, to practice the figurative language. Two things, as I've just alluded to, enable us to consider ourselves figuratively dead to sin. We are literally alive from the spiritual death of sin because of being born again, making us alive together with Christ eternally. Grace allows forgiveness. But the law does not. We have forgiveness of sins because we are under grace and not under the law. Now listen. Therefore, sin is not able to rule over us because it no longer has the strength of the law to bind us. 1 Corinthians 15, 56, and 57. The sting of death, the sin. The word the is actually there. And the strength of sin, the law. But thanks to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, sin no longer has its strength because we are no longer under law but under grace and therefore we are enabled to apply these figurative things that Paul speaks of such as we are dead To sin. What then? Verse 15. Shall we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? And actually, folks, for the rest of this chapter, we are all literal. 
What then shall we sin because we are not under law but under grace? Again, never may it be. Do you not know that whom you present yourselves slaves to obey, you are that one's slaves whom you obey? Whether of sin to death or of obedience to righteousness. But God be thanked. Listen to this verse. This is, is an astounding verse and is a verse that I would think would quiet those people who speak against sovereign grace. But God be thanked that though you were slaves of sin, yet you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine to which you were delivered. We were, were given to the doctrine by the grace of God. In his sovereign grace, he saw fit to reveal these things to us and to cause us to be obedient by Birthing us again from above. And having been set free from sin. Well, folks, we are set free from the power of sin, as we've seen. We are set free from the penalty of sin, as we see in the gospel. But not yet the presence of Romans 7.17, the very next chapter, Paul speaks of sin that dwells in him. And Christians, you and I know that sin still indwells us. And we have a life and death battle every single day, all day long, against this sin. And having been set free from the penalty and power of sin... You became slaves of righteousness. We hunger and thirst after righteousness. I speak, Paul says this now, I speak humanly because of the weakness of your flesh, which is prone to sin. For just as you presented your members slaves of uncleanness and of lawlessness to lawlessness, so now, now present your members slaves of righteousness for holiness. Now as enabled by the new birth, And the fact that we are no longer under the law, but under grace. And sin cannot rule over us. We are enabled to consider ourselves dead to sin. Though figurative language, we can still add it up and are enabled to consider ourselves dead to sin. Because when we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So with those things in mind, I can consider myself dead to to sin. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. What fruit did you have then in the things of which you are now ashamed? Goodness gracious, I think about my life. Goodness gracious, what a shameful, shameful life. I lived. Yes, I'm very ashamed of those things I used to do. 
For the end of those things is death. But now, having been set free, and again we know that means the penalty and power, but not the presence. Having been set free from sin and having become slaves of God, servants. You have your fruit to unto holiness. In the end, everlasting life. For the wages of sin, death. But the gift of God, the gift of God, eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Chapter 7 goes on to deal with the battle that we have with our flesh and sin. The answer is the same as here in chapter 6. Thank God in verse 17, chapter 6, but God be thanked. Thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord for delivering us from our sins. There is forgiveness in Christ. Forgiveness in Christ, in Christ alone. Amen.